If you're someone who has watched my videos before, then welcome back. It's been about a week since I posted a video. And if you're new, i um, talking about nothing right now. So there's not really a whole lot going on in this video, and you should be aware of that. Mm, actually, you don't need to be aware of that. That's fine. Just, uh, you know, try and be honest with you if I can. Um, trying to be honest with myself if I can. And also, we're always honest. Everything is always honest. I just woke up and I'm doing a exercise here where I, it's not that I don't want to record a video and not that I don't want to talk. It's more like I would rather not. So I'm doing it anyway just to experiment with whether or not this will help support my practice of YouTube or not. So this is now the longest gap in between videos and I'm just experimenting with how long can I go in between posting videos? What's the right balance? Because I like to just post whenever I want to. So sometimes I'll do several days in a row. Other times I will skip a week like right now, which is the biggest gap. And I'm, I'm not afraid. I'm just, I'm curious to see, like, if I were to skip several more days, I keep using the word several, whatever that means. And, um, oh, sorry. One thing I don't love about the setup is that if I even slightly nudge the table, then the camera will shake. <laughs> so anyway. Now I'm thinking about how the video is not good and it's not worth posting, which is fine. I mean, those thoughts come up every time that I record. And especially now that I'm not in practice and I'm feeling... Eh, it's like that emoji with the face. So... Yeah, there's a lot of fears and a lot of judgments and desires and comparisons and what if we just didn't do that? What if this video is okay, despite all of the warnings in my thinking that are saying it's not okay and don't do this? Um, to discern the difference between guidance and overprotectiveness is not an easy thing to do. and. It's so personal. What is appropriate in any given situation is unique. And it's difficult to legislate, to create rules, regulations, and systems of law based on the common man or woman or person. I'm just saying that's some outdated phrase they use, the common man. Yeah, or mankind. Anyway, um, yeah, it's difficult to come up with systems of rule and law for the average person when truly each person is quite unique in their um, in the particulars of their life and what is appropriate for them. You know, the fact that we share a common soul and the fact that we have really similar biology, uh, hardware, and to the point where 
all of our emotional experiences are something of a common experience where we imagine or we feel that when we're feeling a certain type of feeling like happiness, that other person who's feeling that same feeling of happiness is having more or less the same experience. And we feel that on a deeper level than like cognitive perceptions. And so when I'm looking at an object and you're looking at an object and we wonder, oh, is it the same object or is it different? Am I perceiving it the same as you? Obviously, we're not perceiving it the same. It's that whole conversation. Um, but the emotional level of resonance is one that's much more seemingly more, um, what's the word? More, not more similar, more sympathetic or coherent in a way. The heart resonance is somehow more coherent with other people, whereas the mind is really just its own unique space for each person. And I mean, not the mind like unity of consciousness mind. I mean, mind like my thinking brain um, and its filter. So, you know. Yeah, my thing right now is I'm having to integrate seemingly opposed and seemingly different aspects of myself, parts of myself, some of which I really don't want to for different reasons. Um, and having to do so under what I feel are very sketchy conditions and a lot of people I mean I can only speak for myself that feels like what's happening right now is not being being put into a position where you have no choice but to I can't really say actually I'm not sure I'm cooking breakfast right now, and it is Monday for me, so I'm just feeling like I want to keep talking because I just want to see if there's anything interesting that will show up, and when there's a pause or a silence, Thoughts are coming in that are saying, oh, this is a terrible video and you should stop recording it and delete it immediately and just continue not recording videos. Part of that is like a self-judgment, but also part of it is just, I don't know what it is. It's the things that I'm trying to work through are not verbal. And so I can't really give a description of them. And artistic expression, music, that's maybe a better vehicle for it. And also that's not always accessible due to certain causes and conditions. So. What am I? Anyway, that's fine. I don't have to have a point. It's fine. Just drinking water. And that's all I drink. And it's been many years. I have tea once in a while. And that is it, I think. There's no other drinks. Yeah. At least for a few years, it's just been water. So you grow to love water, you know? If you're used to, anyway, who cares? I don't want to talk about that anymore. That's enough. Water, okay. Uh, yeah, every time there's a pause in this video, I'm just thinking, God, this is so boring. 
I personally am not bored because I'm, my experience is full of plenty of rich sensory input and there's lots going on that I can feel. And so I'm not bored. I'm just not sure how to translate that into speech or something that can be communicated in a way that will convey, um, sure, yeah, I could take you on a tour of what's going on in my world here. And it's, I'm finding it, um, it's a rich experience. There's, there's so much nuance and so much, there's so much different like shapes and colors and uh, systems and objects and stories. And it's just a matter of like unearth, no, no, ma- finding the connection to, you know, rebuilding that um, connection from the body to the mind and the dark, the light within the darkness, the darkness within the light connection, um, which eh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, This is good, though. I've been plodding on for more than 10 minutes, so I'm happy about that. which I guess maybe early in the morning might be a good time to do this if I'm not feeling it because, yeah, things haven't really started kicking in yet. I haven't had anything to eat yet. The cycles aren't really... Because all day long we're just digesting, digesting, digesting food and all this news and media and so much, so much stuff that's coming in, you know. So it's like maybe this is the time of the most calm or clarity or whatever, but eh, whatever. I don't know. If I could do that with my other eyebrow, I think I would be all set. Let's see. One of these days. Whatever. I'm not going to, I'll work on it. I'll work on it. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, do I stop the video or do I just keep going? I feel like the longer, the better. (laughs) That's my thinking. Yeah, I feel like the longer, the better, even if there's, I mean, granted, yes. There's always that conversation that I'm having with myself is like, do I want to make content? Do I want to edit my videos? Do I want to make them? Because I could ramble on in a video about nothing and have it be really disjointed and boring. And I could edit the video and make it interesting and exciting. And in that way, I can sort of control how it's shown and how it's shared and how it's received and perceived and um, and control how many people are going to connect to that and then that helps me regulate, you know, what level of social interaction I'm looking for. So if I choose to just make a boring video or whatever you want to call it, that's especially pointless and dull. Um, I know that I will, it won't get seen by mo- many people and I won't really have to interact with it very much. Um, and that's most of our lives. Most of everyone's lives is just, quiet moments alone where nothing is happening and um, no one sees it. And it it's not something that we would share, you know what I mean? Like, you just assume that that's what's going on for everyone most of the time is that they're in their own world alone. And yeah, if anyone's watching this now, I can only imagine that If someone's watching this as like a background noise or who knows, they must have a lot of free time or whatever it might be, that would make sense. Um, But most people are really busy and I cannot imagine someone sitting down like on sitting on the bus or whatever with their phone taking like this is not the type of content you're going to watch in those moments. You know what I mean? Um, You need things that are 
short that are full of excitement or full of information or what have you. Um, Cause that's just what fits the world that we're living in right now. But anyway, Whew. Well, it's been 15 minutes now and nothing's coming up yet. So it's kind of like one of the only downsides to recording like this is that if I do think of something really interesting and it's buried 25 minutes into the video, I know no one's going to see it. Um, and sure, yeah, I could edit out as a clip, but I don't know. Maybe it's nice to just have hidden gems somewhere that, that are difficult to be dis discovered. Who knows, man? There's no, there's no right way. There's no optimum, there's no optimal pathway. I mean, is that true? There, because I'm often saying that there is a right way in any given moment, that there is a It's a paradox, I suppose, and we could just always say that. Ah, oh, it's a paradox. The fact that there is no right way, but there is a right way. It's like, okay, there's no right way. There's a right way, but there isn't a right way. Not, yeah. That's the challenge. Why do I keep coming up with these words? The struggle, the challenge, the opportunity. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to go. How do I, how do I also work through and integrate the um, depressing, uh, the choices that I've made? Uh, there's no way of getting at that one. That's just going to be one that has to just let itself go. And I can't. Eee, that's a tough one. If you've ever been a person who goes through a midlife crisis where, well, let's say you, you're married when you're young and maybe you lived a lie and you lived and you're in the wrong marriage and you lost yourself for 15, 20 years, you gave yourself to this thing. And then finally you realize and you get divorced and you start over and then the sense of grief over not just the loss of your relationship, but the loss of all of your good years of your life. That's the kind of, that's the kind of grief that I'm having to figure out. How do I process that? Um, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> yeah. So a little bit of a reaction there. Uh, there's a lot of dark places that I can go to, especially, yeah. Oh, man. And that's kind of why I don't post videos. It's like, if I'm in a really, really dark place, and I don't just mean like emotionally dark, I mean physically, um, then, yeah, that's, it's it's not really appropriate to be doing activity like when when you're in a place like that and um, no matter how much I want to be active and part of the world and society and able to use my I'm talking about disability about like and I don't even want to use that word um, Eh, sometimes people become paralyzed. Sometimes people have brain aneurysms or there's all kinds of things that can go wrong that from our perspective, 
Why did this just shut down? Did I just lose my video?